Data science jobs are growing at an astounding rate. The World Economic Forum predicts that these roles are going to continue to experience an increase in demand. Employment of Operation Research Analysts, which includes Data Analysts, is projected to grow at 25% this decade, with others growing at a mere 4%. As we see a shift to more online certifications for entry-level data science roles, it begs the question, how does one obtain these jobs with no experience? What up, data nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst, and my channel's all about tech and skills for data science. And in this video today, we're gonna to be going through my story about how I differentiated myself to land my most recent job as a data analyst. Additionally, I'll be going through why it's important to differentiate yourself in your portfolio and my tips and recommendations for doing this. So first, let's look at why you need a portfolio and also why you need to think about differentiating yourself with that portfolio. With the recent announcement from Google offering the analytics certificate, this has Google and a bunch of other employers offering to accept the certificate in place of a degree for entry level data analyst positions. And I've been getting a lot of questions around, hey, will this certificate alone get me a job? And also I've gotten other questions where we have the IBM certificate. Hey, should I take both of these certificates together to be more well-rounded? These questions are definitely something that you need to be asking, but I feel like they're looking at the root or the core problem incorrectly. You really need to take a look at this from the employer themselves. If they're looking at a poll full of candidates and everybody has the same certificate, what are you doing to actually stand out and get recognized by your goal employer? Kenji recently did a video, which I'll include a link for, and he went through and reviewed some job research data in the field of data science. And I thought it was really interesting because he went into his approach at encompassing this problem. And then he went into further on how he tackled this problem by differentiating himself. You want to have something that's unique about yourself. For me, the unique thing was the, the sports work that I've done. As I've developed my career, the content creation that I do is something that's fairly unique to me. And the type of research that I do is a little bit different. <sighs> was anybody else distracted by his phenomenal hair? <sighs> okay, I digress. Now getting into my story about how I landed my most recent job as a data analyst. So it was coming time that I needed to start looking for a new role within my company as my previous role was coming to an end. One day I was cruising my company's social networking platform and randomly came across a posting for a data analyst position. At the time, I was concerned that I may not be the best fit for the job as my experience didn't match completely with the requirements of the job. I did, however, see that others were already replying to the thread, and so I immediately reached out to apply. Surprisingly, I got an interview and then even a follow-on interview. And after a bit of time waiting, I found out that I got the job. When I solicited feedback on why I was selected for this position, I found out that I was selected based off my portfolio. Specifically, they were impressed by my passion that I displayed with doing YouTube videos on data science topics. Just as a disclaimer, this is back when my YouTube had less than a thousand subscribers and my videos were getting hardly any views. I think the point is that the employers were able to see that I had a passion for a topic and was able to share it with others in a matter that they appreciated. So is the moral of the story, and also now I think of a Ken G's story, is the moral to create a YouTube channel? And the answer is, well, maybe. If that is your passion, and that is what you want to, how you want to display your portfolio. In my case, I like making videos, I like teaching others, so I combine this with data science uh, through my YouTube channel. That may not be the same, and probably won't be the same for you. Just to show another example that doesn't revolve around YouTube, let's take David Robinson, for example. He's the principal data scientist at Heap. Whenever he was getting his PhD, he was also on the side an active answer on platforms similar to uh, Stack Overflow. And during that time, one of his answers that he posted on there got picked up by an employer. The employer reached out to him, interviewed him, and he eventually got hired by that employer. So there's different ways that you can go about getting and setting up your portfolio. The point in showcasing these examples is to exhibit that you don't necessarily have to have job to demonstrate experience. I would argue that showcasing your skills and experience through your portfolio may be more beneficial than actually meeting some arbitrary time requirement for a job posting. So let's go through my process that I recommend for going through and building a unique portfolio or a differentiated portfolio. 
The first thing that we need to start with is understanding what your passion is and what you want to display. So in my case, I like teaching others and also making videos. So I've adapted this to my need. You may have something different, right? So you may be deep into biology and you really like this. And maybe there's a subset of that that requires some data analysts that you can showcase uh, for the world to see. The second thing is you need to think about the end goal. Where are you gonna be displaying this knowledge and showcasing it for others to see? There's a lot of different popular options to think about, but just to name a few, if you're into dashboards, maybe you're gonna post it on Tableau Public. If you're on writing, maybe you're gonna publish your work on medium.com. So there's a lot of different options and you need to have that in mind when you're going about your project. The third and final step is now we need to go in and create our project itself. And you need to think about what you wanna do and specifically what data set you want to use for this. Pick something that's interesting and I'll include a link to one of the sources that I use to uh, try to identify any interesting data sources. The typical Titanic, Minst, and Iris data sets are great for getting started and great at comparing your work at others. But as far as to showcase in our portfolio, you're really not differentiated with that. You really need to pick something that is unique to you and your passion. From there, start actually building your project using, there's a lot of different popular options such as SQL, Python, or R, or Tableau, or Power BI. Those are all great sources to and tools to use to start with. Also, there's other tools to showcase your experience. So don't forget about like Git for version control or Flask and Django for web development. So also think outside of the box. Don't just limit yourself to those core tools of a data analyst. And finally, for creating your project, after you're done with it, then from there, solicit feedback from others to further improve your skills. I went through a project itself and I had a stakeholder that was preparing some visualizations for, and I thought I did a pretty damn good job making these visualizations. And I saw, uh, gave it to the client themselves. They checked it out and they were not as impressed with my work. And it was actually good to have this failure because it made me realize that I needed to further improve my skills in visualization. So wrapping this all up, I really strongly feel that you have to have some sort of way of differentiating yourself to stand out in the job pool today. And to do that, you really need to follow that three-step approach. Find out what your passion is. From there, start diving into what platforms you want to use to showcase your experience. And then three, actually start developing projects and putting it out to the world to get feedback on. So as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. If you had a similar experience with getting a job or not getting a job, drop it in the comments below. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.